So it looks like we're getting like really close to totality. So let's take a closer look at the feeds coming in from Australia. Um, Kelly, do you want to tell us what we're looking at um, and kind of talk us through that through this? this yes, awesome. definitely. So we're we're getting really close. Um, so the dark uh, upper left hand side, um, you see the moon, and then that little sliver is still the sun, and then the prominence again that that uh, little uh, stick out of magnetic field and plasma is at the left. It looks like a little jet maybe coming off of the sun. Um, and as we're getting closer again, we're trying to um, see those Bailey's beads, which tells us a little bit of, of the surface um, of the moon and how it's peaks and valleys. It's not a perfect polished sphere. Um, it's, uh, it has a history. Um, and, uh, and we're going to see that uh, shown through the uh, shown through the Bailey's beads and then uh, eventually just go to one uh, diamond ring and then we will go into totality. So again, we're getting real close, about two minutes. Wow, and you can still see the prominence. You can see the prominence more and more. And I'm, I'm actually seeing a little bit of something also almost directly across from it. Um, there's a, a kind of a band of activity that uh, that happens uh, as these things form. And so it's it's kind of in that same band. So I think of it as almost uh, directly horizontal, but we'll see as, as we get closer if, if that comes out at all um, and can see a little bit better. Um, no, we're really getting dark. And so if we're in Australia, um, it's probably again, dropped in temperature a little um, on that beach that we saw Henry, mm -hmm. um, Henry was at. Um, and again, any animals might just start to think that it's nighttime. Um, the air uh, or the the light will actually get really um, kind of it just feels eerie um, and it's it's like your your brain knows that something's just not quite right like I, I'm not sure about this you know where did the sun go and why is it a, in kind of a different color um, and it's getting really really close and uh, and it's uh, it's exciting to uh, to experience this live with y'all yeah and we're still glasses on right we are still glasses on at this point in time um yeah. you will still be able or to indirect. see that thin yeah and so we're almost there oh and now it has gone dark oh that's still too bright we probably should still have our glasses on uh but those are the bailey's beads and we are going towards those beads, diamond ring, and there we go. There is your total total eclipse. So glasses off at this point in time, experiencing this beautiful corona. Um, so that prominence is out there. Um, you see that. You also see on the other side, um, almost like helmets uh, or um, triangular shaped flows. Uh, so the solar wind is uh, flowing out, and so we're we're really witnessing that corona there. Um, and as they adjust, um, adjust things, wow, there's just all sorts of structure. So it's not a simple thing, right? It's a very complicated, dynamic, always churning, always moving, um, always evolving. Um, and you see so much structure out. And this is what hopefully that kite is, um, is recording right now, is all of these different um, uh, prominences and you almost see loops sometimes. Um, and uh, and then again, things that look like they flow out of the out of the um, picture. Um, that's mm -hmm. the solar wind, and that's what connects with our planet. Um, and now we're actually getting the Bailey's beads back. So this would be glasses on. Again, it was a very short but amazing experience. Um, and again, we're we're going to have around uh, four and a half minutes in places in the U.S. Uh, in 2024, but that was beautiful. So yeah, so the Bailey's beads are coming back. We're coming back now into what is more of the more beads coming back. And you can still see a little bit of the Corona, but again, we would have our glasses on at this point in time because this is the safest, uh, the safe, this or, or your glasses are the safest way to view um, the solar eclipse. Wow, this is just phenomenal. Absolutely it spectacular. It is, no. it is amazing. Wow, how many eclipses have you seen? 
So I have seen uh, two total eclipses in person. Wow. Yeah, and, and each one is, this is magical and there is just something about experiencing it um, that is surreal. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah. there's the prominence and all of the other type of uh, mass that's just kind of hanging out there and and um, playing on the loops, the magnetic loops of the sun. And um, yeah, it's beautiful. That is absolutely phenomenal. Yes, and, and this activity kind of picks up as we go towards solar max. And so um, with predictions right now, solar max is somewhere between 2024 and 2025. So we could have a very active, um, and really structured and, and a lot of different things um, on the sun uh, as we have our uh, total eclipse in 24 and our annular eclipse in, in 23. So t can you talk us through that a little bit? So you're talking about solar max. So uh, the sun has cycles, the solar cycles. What's the difference and what does solar max mean? In Yes. Yeah. So the sun, uh, sun has cycles in its magnetic um, energy. Um, what happens is basically the magnetic fields get twisted, 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 and then suddenly they, they have to just break and relax. Um, and so the uh, minimum is when they're relaxed and the, the maximum is as they are getting more and more twisted and more energy uh, to, to blow off the steam uh, through coronal mass ejections. Those again, 80 million school buses racing towards us at millions of miles an hour, um, or the solar flares or the energetic particles that the sun gives off. Um, and so this cycle that going from that really relaxed magnetic field to really tense um, it takes um, 11 years to complete. Um, so you end up going uh, around five to six years to a, um, to a maximum and then back to a minimum and back to a maximum again. And we're headed towards a maximum in 2020, uh, 2024, 2025. Um, and so that's, again, we're going to have a lot more activity, um, more flares, more coronal mass ejections, and those energetic particles. Well, okay, so let's keep watching as we take a few more um, questions. Here's a really good one. Aaron Polito on YouTube asks, what useful data does NASA get and what do they do with it from, exer from um, observing eclipses? That's a great question. Um, and we take all sorts of different um, data during eclipses. Um, there will be an announcement soon of, of things that we're specifically doing for the 24. But for instance, for the kite um, that is flying in Australia uh, today, um, there will be a spectrometer. So there'll be, there'll be data from that. And that will all have to go into an archive for NASA and uh, to make sure that's open and available to, to folks. Um, so any of the things, uh, any of the data that is collected from, uh, from a NASA source will then be uh, available to use for anyone um, uh, shortly after it is collected.